All right, let's move on to the, to the other big story of the week. Uh, we're not gonna do too much on the, the war itself, although you guys can feel free to bring up whatever you want, obviously, uh, but let's just talk about the energy situation at home and gas prices. Let's throw this image up from CBS LA. This is the city that I fled. That mobile station was on the corner of uh, not the last house I lived in, the previous one. The gas prices are completely insane. 735. Uh, for regular unleaded gas, really nuts. Uh, but don't worry guys, we've got Jen Psaki on the case. Here's this little video that she put out to calm us down. You may have noticed this week that your gas prices have gone up. I wanna talk to you a little bit about why. A lot of it has to do with Vladimir Putin. The reality is that Russia is one of the three largest oil producers in the world. And the fact that they have started this conflict, invaded a foreign country, and they are such a big producer of oil in the world, is the reason why the global oil markets are disturbed right now and why your gas prices are going up. And so to that point, inflation goes up today. The president's statement blames the Putin price hike. Are you guys just gonna start blaming Putin for everything? until the midterms? Well, we've seen the price of gas go up at least 75 cents since President Putin lined up troops on the border of Ukraine. Last month, the statement didn't mention the Putin price hike. It mentioned inflation because of the pandemic. Why is that? Well, Peter, last year, last two years, there was a pan global pandemic. Everyone who's a uh, global economist have all agreed that that has been the biggest contributor to date of inflation because of the impact on the supply chain. Obviously, global events impact the economy, the global economy, as well as global inflation. And the uh, price hikes as a result that have ex escalated over the course of time of President Putin's further invasion of uh, the impact on the global oil markets are, of course, having an impact. Oh, soulless Jen Psaki, just lying and lying and lying about everything. Uh, my guys did a little research here. We've got researchers too. Gas uh, from the day that Joe Biden took uh, office, so the day that he was inaugurated, until the day that Putin uh, went into Ukraine, went up a dollar fourteen. So yes, it's gone up since, but it was going up the entire time. Uh, Kyle, was there something? Help me here. Was there something that Joe Biden did right when he got into office that might have, uh, did he stop something that might have helped with this situation? Well, was the, there something? I keep, I, I had papers here. I, was there something? I think there was something. Well, I think he pretty much gave us all a warning when the first thing he did was jump onto the Paris Accords and adopted this, this crazy, uh, you know, uh, carbon zero strategy, which is basically about as futile as the uh, it's COVID zero strategy yeah. that we've seen, you know, attempted to be implemented around the world. Uh, we saw it with the, the federal leases uh, situation is pretty interesting. A lot of drillers are complaining they can't get the capital lending that they need in order to do this drilling. There are some bottlenecks in the regulatory framework that he's imposed. And of course, the Keystone XL a pipeline which is bottlenecked the transit that to get to the refineries that are on the Gulf Coast that allow us to you know refine our own gasoline which helps bring the prices down uh, on the margins but I think overall Jen is just you know being her own usual devilish self and sort of creating this sort of cloud in people's minds but the fact is that you know like you saw at the, uh, the Hollywood sign it's now higher than the gasoline was in the apocalyptic film I Am Legend with Will Smith. <laughs> it was only six seventy one a gallon there. So I think Biden's presidency is making us pine to live in dystopian fiction at this point. Uh, and that's pretty much fiction is all that Jen Psaki has to peddle at this point. It's not putting food on the table. It's not putting gasoline in our tanks. So it's pretty much uh, empty gruel to, to, to dish out to the plebes. Uh, that she's offered at this point. I think that normal people are tuning her out. Uh, it's not gonna fly at the dinner table and it's not gonna fly in the upcoming elections. For that, the is a great, that is a great reference, man. Did they show you the, the prices right at the beginning when they show you that sort of dystopia in New York City? They have a, like an image of it? Is that where you're grabbing that from? Yeah, yeah, 671 the, in the clip. You can, you can find it. There's like a little meme thing floating around. You can find it. I, I will take your word <laughs> on that. Um, Ian, is there anything we could be doing to helping right now? Is there anything that Biden's not doing that might help? I think uh, Kyle might have alluded to some of it. <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing we can do is start getting some Republicans in office, honestly. I mean, Biden has been a disaster both on the foreign policy front, but also the energy front since he came in, talked about the Paris Climate Accords, talked about closing the Keystone XL pipeline. 
But on a higher level, every single one of his solutions involves green energy, which Europe has showed is not a solution. The solution is under us right now. It's the fact that the United States, as of 2016, is sitting on the most untapped oil in the world. We have the solution beneath our feet, but people like Biden are too busy sucking up to the green energy crowd to really acknowledge that. And I think in some ways, the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine, with Russia invading Ukraine, is somewhat of a blessing for Biden economically, because now with COVID not an excuse anymore, COVID is over and has been over for a while, they have another excuse because the price of has been increasing month on month since he came into office. Inflation is at record rates. And so this is just a very, very public thing that Biden can point to and blame. And of course, when it comes down eventually, if he's still in office, he'll take credit for that. He's very, very good at taking credit mm -hmm. for good things, whether he's responsible or not, and blaming others. And so the fact that it's a Putin price hike is absurd, but also demonstrative of the earlier issue where the media has embraced this messaging that it's the Putin price hike, which of course it's not. Right. Putin price hike, that's the meme, just like don't say gay became the meme. They just manufacture these things that are not true and then they, everyone just repeats it and repeats it. Sarah, could you allow me to toss up a conspiracy theory here and you tell me Please. if I'm completely insane. I know you work with that Steve Deese over there who's always throwing out those crazy, <laughs> wild conspiracy yeah. theories over at the blaze, like, uh, you know, this great reset or some of these things. Uh, but my feeling is these people could not possibly be this inept. I don't think they could be this inept. And my belief is actually that everything that the two guys here just laid out about Keystone and not giving permits and all of this stuff is intentional, that they are uh, that twofold, I would say, trying to upend the world energy system and basically destroy America. Like I, I actually honestly believe that at this point. Am I completely crazy? Will I be booted for no. YouTube for saying that? No, well, I mean, I can't speak for YouTube, but yeah. uh, I mean, I can tell you that all of the evidence points to that, right? Because you have them making these uh, epic levels of propaganda, government propaganda videos, trying to have the White House press secretary, who is a professional liar, come in and explain to people why it is that gas prices are rising when people, I mean, I understand some Americans are a little... I would say uh, disconnected from reality, but I don't think that Americans have that short of a memory that they don't realize that before all of this was going on, two months ago, three months ago, they were paying more at the pump. They were paying more at the mm -hmm. grocery store. They're paying more for everything. I don't think that they uh, have such short attention spans that they don't remember that. But more importantly, we heard Joe Biden in the last presidential debate say that he was going to transition from the oil and gas yep. uh, sector, from the oil and gas industry. He said it. And remember, we all, uh, all the Republicans sat there and watched it and went, oh my gosh, he said the quiet part out loud. There's no way he gets past that. He has to be toast. And then as we know how it turned out, he is the most popular president of all time, 81 million votes, uh, the most secure election that we've ever had. But he was saying these things. He was telling us that he was going to do these things. It's a wonder to me that he doesn't want to take the credit because as Kamala Harris said, uh, you know, you get what you vote for, meaning uh, we're doing all of these things that we said we were going to do, and he is. So I think you're right, Dave. I think the answers were right in front of us. They told us what they were going to do. Now that they're doing it, uh, they don't like the, the criticism. They don't like the, the, uh, the, the pain that Americans are feeling, not because they care about Americans, but because they know it makes them look bad and they want to continue their power. Crazy conspiracy theory, indeed. Put uh, the tinfoil hat right on me. 